This video is going to be looking at question 19 of the Unit 2 sample paper for IAL in Excel Chemistry. If you want to check out the multiple choice, have a look at the playlist and look at the previous video. But here we're going to be focusing on the very first written question of section B. So we are told that we have got two methyl propan 1 ol and we are given the skeletal formula. And we can convert this to one bromo 2 methyl propane and we want to give the reagents and conditions. Well, we need to think what's actually happening here. This is a bromination reaction. So we are going from the alcohol to a bromoalkane. And what reagents and conditions does that require? Well, we are going to require a source of the bromine, which is going to be, in this case, potassium bromide. And that also requires a 50% concentrated sulfuric acid to act as a catalyst. And the conditions, a lot of the conditions here tend to be very similar, but in particular for the bromination, it requires reflux using the Liebig condenser. And any time that we have reflux, we must also heat the substance. One mark for your reagents, one mark for your conditions. Part B is now looking at the mechanism for this conversion of the two, the, sorry, the one bromo two methyl propane back into two methyl propan one ol, and we do this by heating it with aqueous alkali. And they are given a mechanism. Now there are of course some problems in this mechanism, and it is up to us to identify three mistakes. So this conversion, we have to think about well, what is it? This should be a nucleophilic substitution reaction. And the good thing with these sorts of mechanisms is they are all very similar. They follow the same steps every time. So if you practice drawing out the mechanism multiple times, you should find questions like this very easy because there's only so many ways that they can ask it. What they might change is what the actual bromoalkane or alcohol is, but the concept is the same every time because only a small part of the molecule actually takes part. So when we're looking at what's happening, let's just zoom in a little bit more. We want to see what are the key issues. So the first thing that I notice here is our dipoles are the wrong way around. Our dipoles should be delta positive, delta negative. Now, with a question like this, what you might find useful is to do what I'm doing here and look at the actual mechanism and annotate it before you then write out your answer. We then have to look at the arrows. Well, the top arrow going from the CBR bond onto the BR, that's perfect. We don't have to touch that. But our other arrow is concerning. Your curly arrows should always go from the electrons to the area of positivity because it's showing the movement of an electron pair. So first of all, our arrow is going the wrong way. Our arrow should be going from the OH to the delta positive carbon. And for any mechanism, it will always ask you to include three things. You must show dipoles, you must show curly arrows, and you must also show lone pairs because that shows you the actual movement of the electrons. So we must show the lone pair on the OH. Those are our three errors. So then we want to make sure that we put that into words. Well, first of all, the arrow should show the movement of the lone pair from the OH to the delta positive carbon. There's our first thing. Secondly, our dipole was reversed. So we know that our carbon should be delta positive and our bromine should be the delta negative. Now you may be able to get marks for showing that on the diagram as well. And the last point is that our lone pair on the OH minus our hydroxide was missing. Key, most important things for any mechanism, we show any lone pairs, any dipoles, and curly arrows.
Those are always the three things that we are expecting for every single mechanism. And for part C, in this nice short question, only seven marks, we want to convert the 1-bromo-2-methylpropane into 2-methylpropene. So going from the bromoalkane this time into an alkene, and we want to give the reagents and the conditions. Well, this reaction is not a nucleophilic substitution reaction. This is an elimination so if we just go back up here, you can see that we specified that this required aqueous alkali. If the alkali is in aqueous conditions, we get the nucleophilic substitution. If we use the alkali under non-aqueous conditions, we can get this elimination. So our reagent is going to be potassium hydroxide. And the most important thing for the conditions is it is in ethanolic conditions. So we dissolve the KOH in ethanol instead of the water. And this also requires reflux with a little bit of heat. That is seven marks in total looking at nucleophilic substitutions and the reactions to convert between bromoalkanes and alcohols. Check back on the playlist for the remaining questions in this paper. If you've got any questions about this particular question, or any of the marks of how they break down or how we understood any of the points, please feel free to leave a comment below.